Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create beautiful, smooth skin in your portrait photos by using frequency separation in Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. What is up guys, Photo Fever here and welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time here guys and you wanna learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, Start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you guys don't miss anything. So today we are talking about frequency separation. Firstly, what is it, how to do it, but also how to create beautiful smooth skin while using frequency separation. Now this is quite a complex effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you step by step on how to actually break apart the high and low frequencies and then how to create smooth skin. So with that out of the way guys, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo. And today I'm working on this raw photo here where you can see there are currently no main adjustments to it. All you can see is just on the right hand side, I've just made a few high contrast and uh, contrast adjustments here and also clarity. So if I do the before and after, you can see I haven't created any smooth skin effects yet. I've literally just affect the basic sliders that you can find in the camera raw filter. So after I've done that, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click open. And this will open it up back up into Photoshop, you can see here. So as you can see, before we go ahead and do any editing, we can go and zoom in. You can see there is quite a few freckles, there's a few kind of imperfections in the skin which we're going to be removing and mitigating using the frequency separation effect. But before we start any of that, we want to remove any freckles or any large imperfections that we can use using the spot healing brush tool. So before we go ahead and break using frequency separation, we're just going to create a new layer, which we're then going to be smoothing out any large imperfections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press Command J on our keyboard. That will duplicate that layer. And we always want to be reverting back to an original layer just in case we make any mistake. That's why I duplicate it. And what we want to do is go over to the left hand side and you can see we've got the spot healing brush tool. Now, if you click and hold, you might find it's also called the healing brush tool, the patch tool, the content aware move tool or red eye tool. But I'm going to be using the spot healing brush tool for this particular effect. And what you can do is zoom in. And what you want to do is, as you can see, there's a large kind of uh, dot here that you can see it's part of a mascara. So what you can do is click, drag over that area, and what it will do is Content Aware Fill will remove it for us. And we want to remove as much imperfections as possible in this particular step. Because as soon as we create frequency separation, then we'll have to do that exact same thing on two separate layers. And we don't necessarily want to do this. So what we want to do is try and remove as many imperfections as possible first, before we go ahead and quickly remove them using the uh, frequency separation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just remove as many of these little freckles as possible. And I'd recommend spending more time on this than on actually the frequency separation effect because this really is what makes a large difference in the final outcome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly do this now to make sure this tutorial is nice and short. Lovely, so as you can see, I've spent a little bit of time just removing all the small little imperfections that you can see on the skin. And it's a lot easier doing it now than doing it after you've created the frequency separation effect, because once we've done that, you've got to work on two separate layers, which means every time you work on one layer, then you've got to do all of the same effects on the separate layer. So it takes a lot longer, so I recommend doing as much as you can doing it now than doing it later on. So as you can see, if I just show you the before and after, if I do the before, and do the after, you can see I've just removed most of the very small imperfections, any spots, any little bit of mascara that was leaking onto the face, anything like that to make it nice and easy. So now what we can do is now work on frequency separation. So how do we do this? Well, what we want to do is we want to create two brand new layers. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose that layer one, which is the current layer that we're working on with all of the spots removed. And I'm gonna press Command J, and then I'm gonna go ahead and press Command J again. So as you can see, I've now got four layers here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go ahead and put these two bottom layers here, and I'm gonna group them, and I'm just going to call them old. So that is the before layer. And then this layer here and this layer here is what we're going to be working on with frequency separation. So the bottom layer, so layer one copy that we've got here, I'm going to name this one color. Lovely. And then I'm going to name the top one here texture. So I'm going to call this texture like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the color from the texture. And this is the main point with frequency separation. We're gonna split the high channel from the low channel. So we're gonna split texture from the color. So we can actually manipulate them independently from each other. So what I'm going to do is firstly turn the texture layer off and we're gonna work on the color layer first. So we're gonna select that color layer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to filter. We're gonna go down to blur and then we're gonna go down to Gaussian Blur. Now what we want to do is zoom into an area with fairly smooth skin. So we're gonna do like the cheek area here. We're gonna go ahead and sample that area. And what we want to do, start off at 0.1 and we want to blur it until you can see all of the texture has been removed from the skin in the small thumbnail you can see in the Gaussian Blur filter. So we're gonna move that up until you see the texture has completely gone. So we're gonna go for about Let's go for here. So we're gonna go for a nine pixel blur in this particular case. So what I'm gonna do is simply go ahead and click OK on your keyboard. So as you can see now, we have now separated the color, but we haven't separated the texture. So that's what we need to do now. So instead of going to our color layer, we're gonna turn back our texture layer and we're gonna turn that on. And now as you can see, the photo is reverted back to normal. So what we need to do now is actually find the texture. So the way to do this, is to go up to image and down to apply image. Now in apply image, what we want to do is make sure we've got our source is the photo that we're currently working on. Then we're gonna to go to our layer and instead of choosing merged, we're gonna go ahead and choose color because that is the layer that we're actually going to be working on. Then we want to go on our channels. We want to make sure we've got RGB selected because we want all of the channels to be selected. And then in the bottom here, in our blending mode options, we want to make sure we've got subtract selected and we've got our opacity at 100% with a scale of two and an offset of 128. And make sure we haven't got this inverted button selected. Once you've done all of that, so this is what it should look like, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. So now the photo should look this gray with a little bit of texture showing through. Then what we want to do is go to our blending mode options, choose from blending mode normal, and we're gonna drop down to linear light. So we go ahead and select like so. So what you can do is you can actually test to see if we've correctly done this by going to the old photo and turning it off and on again. And if there is no difference, it means you have correctly actually separated all of the texture from the color, which means the photo doesn't look anything different, which is perfect. So now what we can do is now work on them independently from each other, which is a really good way to start off. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just turn off that old sector. Firstly, we're going to be working on the color first. So we're gonna make sure we've got our color layer selected. And then what we want to do is go to the brush tool, but not just any brush tool. We want to go to the brush mixer tool. So we're gonna go over to the left-hand side. If you click and hold over the brush tool, you'll find there's a brush tool, a pencil tool, a color replacement tool, but also a mixer brush tool. And that's the brush tool that we want to be selecting. So make sure you've got the brush mixer tool selected. Now on the top margin here, you can see there are a quite a few adjustment layers. So follow along to the adjustment layers that I have selected. So what we want to do is make sure that we've got clean the brush after every soak selected, and we want to turn off load brush after each stroke. So make sure that one is selected. Next. We want to make sure we've got custom selected here. Next to that, we want to make sure we've got our wet of 4%. We've got our load of 75%. The mix is 90% and the flow is going to be 100%. Now you can drop the flow if you want to create less subtle of effect, 
but I recommend starting at 100% and pretty much going from there. So once you've got all of those selected, we can now start smoothing out the color of the skin. So what we're going to do is make a fairly large brush, something not too large, and we want to make sure we go over any skin. We don't want to go any over large contrast edges. You don't want to go over eyes, you don't want to go over lips, you don't want to go over nose, just go over the skin. So make sure we've got that color layer selected. And then what we're going to do is click and drag over the skin. And what you want to do is go over it completely, especially over any areas that you feel need to be smoothed out. So you just need to go over all of the skin, missing out all of the lips or any high contrast edge because this effect will affect any high contrast edges. If I, for instance, go over the lips, that lip color will then bleed into the actual skin tones itself. And we don't want to do that. We just want to go over the skin here. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time and I'm gonna go over the skin as best as I can. Again, clicking and dragging over the skin just like so. And again, if you've got any large area, you can make the brush ever so slightly larger but remember guys, try not to go any over high contrast edges. And again, try and follow the skin in its entirety. So for instance, the nose, if you go up and down, it will create a smoother effect than if you go from side to side. So try and follow the skin as much as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend as much time as I can now. Lovely, so as you can see, I've spent a little bit of time and I'm actually really, really happy with the results. Now, as you can see, the nose is gone a little bit flat and it almost looks very matte looking. So you can actually add a little bit more of effect if you want to by using the dodge and burn tool. So you can go over to the dodge tool here on the left-hand side. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select dodge. And what you can do is just go over any area that you feel just needs to be brightened up just a little bit. But again, you can always spend time using the dodge and burn tool to go ahead and actually fix a lot of these things. But this particular effect is just smoothing the skin. So what I can do now is actually show you the before and after. So I can show you the before, and then I can show you the after, and wow, what a difference. I must say, I think frequency separation is absolutely amazing for creating smooth skin. Brilliant, and there we go guys. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about Photoshop, Lightroom, and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you guys don't miss anything. Now, if you want to learn more about Photoshop, I've got my latest video just up here. But if you want to learn more about Photoshop retouching, then I've got a playlist just down here. But until next time, guys, keep creating.